and is Professor An Hyung Jun. He is visiting professor at the KDI School of Public Policy and Management and a member of the National Academy of Sciences. And he was a student here in Yonsei and studied political science in Columbia University. And he has anything, please tell me and so you can get it. And please check the package if you have the transportation card. That's the black one, small. So if you don't, yes, that one. And if you don't have the workbook, there is a paper for the lecture in the front. So if you raise your hand, I can give, yes, give the paper. Now, this morning, <clears throat> I'm very pleased to talk about the current state of uh, uh, Korea, Japan, China uh, cooperation. By that, basically, uh, we mean the, the current state of uh, uh, no sensation cooperation and uh, issues facing uh, in uh, facilitating or promoting this uh, regional cooperation. Uh, as you know, uh, uh, the most important uh, aspect of uh, uh, North East Asian cooperation uh, is taking place uh, by that uh, uh, in the vicinity of China, but also uh, throughout the North, South China Sea and East China Sea, and uh, China is trying to, to expand its influence into the West, West Pacific, even into the... Uh... So, uh, as a result of this, there is a rising rivalry between the United States and China. Uh, 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 it seems to me this rivalry is, 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 is going to continue for some time to come. So, so, uh, this so-called North East Asian cooperation, uh, so-called North East Asian regional uh, cooperation, has to make adjustment to this rising rivalry between the U.S. and then China. So, uh, a, an overall theme that I want to get across to you is that uh, there seems to be two different versions of uh, uh, so-called negotiation on TPP, Trans-Pacific uh, Cooperation. So, 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 in other words, the United States is coming back from the Middle East to Asia and the Pacific, saying that the, the gravity of the world power is shifting from Europe to East Asia, and therefore the future of, uh, of the world sent a statement made by the Pentagon. They want to uh, redeploy their naval forces, something like 60% of naval forces in the Pacific and 40% uh, in the remaining area. And, and this is uh, uh, it's called rebalancing strategy or, or America's pivot to East, East Asia. Now, on the other hand, China, however, regard this attempt as, as you know, this uh, coming back by the United States from becoming a, 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 a great power uh, and therefore, Chinese it seems to me Chinese is, is, is trying to uh, uh, balance uh, this American attempt to come back to East Asia. So now, uh, uh, now let me elaborate on this uh, on this uh, uh, phenomenon. Now, American glo global uh, and shifting to East East Asia. Uh, this is what what we call uh, offshore balancing strategy. In other words, the United States traditionally, as the United States traditionally uh, did maintain this uh, offshore balancing. In other words, the United States advocates so-called open door policy. Uh, and then, you, as, you, as you know, when, when Japan carried out this uh, attack on Pearl Harbor in 1941, uh, and only then did the United States uh, uh, intervene into this Pacific war. So the United States, seem, you know, it seems the United States is coming back to this old tradition of uh, 
China was the largest land power in the 19th century. Uh, at the end of the uh, uh, 19th century, the Chinese GDP probably would, you know, was larger than 30% of the global GDP. Uh, so, so according to Chinese perspective, during the Qing dynasty, China did exercise hegemonic power in most of uh, Asia and Pacific. So they, to their perspective, they, they want to come back, they want to restore the original position in Persia upon China. They wanted to uh, to uh, uh, beat them back. But then, uh, at the end of the 19th century, during the uh, so-called during the Opium War, uh, the Chinese were unable to beat uh, uh, Great Britain, as you know. And, and, and as a lot of that, uh, uh, the Treaty of Nan Nanking was uh, signed, and China was, the Chinese was forced to, uh, to accept this so-called unequal treaty imposed on China. They opened up uh, uh, several ports along the eastern coast. So since then, Chinese have deep had this, uh, this profound sense of humiliation. Now, with the rising power of China, economically, uh, you recall uh, two years ago, in, in 2010, uh, the Chinese economy replaced uh, uh, the Japanese economy as uh, uh, the world number two economy. Uh, and then, from that time on, more or less the Chinese have uh, enjoy a great sense of, uh, of confidence. Uh, now, named on China, uh, this is sort of a biographical uh, uh, book about his, his experiences in dealing with China. And in that book, he pointed out that uh, Western power put emphasis on deterrence, uh, uh, but the Chinese put more, you know, more emphasis on preemption, meaning that the Chinese want to, uh, uh, to deter Western powers from approaching China in advance. Uh, this kind of behavior of China Indian border. So, so we are beginning to see another sign of a, of a, a rivalry between the, the United States and China uh, for the future of, of the Pacific and East Asia, it seems to me. Now, to uh, cooperate uh, while keeping their differences uh, and then they could uh, uh, develop some kind of partnership in the name of so-called co-evolution. Uh, in other words, China and the United States could uh, evolve into sort of a specific uh, partners. Uh, and then really advocated by uh, scholars of international relations. There, there's uh, one scholar named uh, uh, Aaron Friedberg uh, who, who served as an uh, uh, advisor to uh, uh, Vice President Dick Cheney, uh, he's currently teaching at Princeton. According, he, he wrote a, group, a good book called uh, The Struggle for Supremacy. There was a French uh, general named uh, Napoleon uh, who made a, a very interesting statement. And at that time, this was almost 200 years ago, uh, at that time he said China was a, a sleeping lion. When this lion woke, uh, wake up, the entire world would tremble. Then there was war. This was true in, in the Napoleon War. This was true in World War One. This was true in World War Two. And this was true in the Cold War. When the, when the Soviet, Soviet Union was unable to be integrated into the Western part. There was Cold War, but uh, the Soviet Union collapsed uh, voluntarily. Uh, but China is rising right now. Uh, now, as for the future of China, uh, nobody knows. In Europe, all of the uh, territorial disputes were settled uh, with the so-called Helsinki Final Act in 1975. They accepted the border that emerged at the end of World War II. But in, in East Asia, in North Asia, we still have this territorial dispute, as you know. Chinese and, and Japanese are disputing over this tiny island called uh, what Japanese called Singapore, what Japanese, Chinese called Taoyuri, and uh, Korea and Japan are really confronting over this uh, uh, this island called uh, what they call Tokto and what Japanese called Takeshima. 
and uh, uh, as you know, the the Chinese, the Middle Kingdom, meaning Jungur. Jungur means the center of the universe. So, according to the traditional uh, sense, uh, China means the universe. Uh, according to Chinese, they call it Tensha. Tensha means under the heaven, but Tensha really means the realm, the universe. And the Chinese Chinese king was called uh, uh, Tensor, uh, uh, meaning the emperor was the uh, uh, son of the heaven. So, so Chinese, as a result of this strong tradition, and the same language called the Chinese character, China have had the former Soviet Union and, and the people of China. In the former Soviet Union, the, the number of minority exceeded the number of Russian uh, by the end of the Cold War. This is why the Soviet Union uh, collapsed easily. In China, however, as you know, uh, there are 55 minorities, but their number is, is less than 8% of the entire population. And the, the Han people, so-called Han people, constitute more than 92% of Chinese, of Chinese population. And they have, you know, they have had this trade and civilization. So we have a historical dispute. Uh, and, and, and as a result of that, the, the Japanese and Koreans still have a, a strong sense of what I, what I call wounded nationalism. In other words, the, in other words well, from, from Korean, from, there's a rising uh, tension between Chinese uh, assertive nationalism Jinghua, Jinghua Minjujui, sort of Chinese Sinocentric uh, nationalism and Japanese uh, uh, wounded nationalism. Uh, and uh, this, this, this uh, uh, national uh, sentiment was uh, uh, aggravated uh, by the incident uh, that took place in, uh, at that time, Prime Minister uh, did return uh, the Chinese fishermen back to China. And even after these fishermen were sent back, the Chinese government demanded that uh, uh, the, the Japanese government should make an open policy. I mean, this is, uh, this is uh, unprecedented. And, and, and so it seems to me China, Japanese have this, this uh, strong sense of hurt. Uh, and, 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 and they don't know the, the Japanese. Emerging uh, mature democracies, uh, we, we have a government uh, we have a lot of complaints about current politics, but then at least we have been a able to maintain democratic form of government in the sense that we, we have a govern government uh, by the consent of the people. I mean, uh, government selected by the people is the core of democracy, in my view. Uh, so we have a different political values. Uh, uh, by and large, Korea and Japan are institutionalizing rule of law and human right. Whereas in China, I don't think there is a rule of law. It may take a long time. Agriculture will be the major issue. As you know, if China somehow allow Korea to, to, to exclude the agriculture from this negotiation, then there will be a low level uh, FDA with China. But we, we, we do advocate high level of FDA with China, involving not only uh, manufacturing goods for market for, for Japan too. So, so economically speaking, as a result of a market mechanism, uh, economic cooperation is pro is proceeding smoothly. As you know, trade and investment are proceeding smoothly, of course, with the blessing of government. So this is the pooling factors. But then, this pooling factors alone does not make you cooperate politically or on security issues. As you know, before World War II, Germany and, and uh, uh, Great Britain were very close to democracy, common uh, economic uh, system called the mechanism. Uh, in, in East Asia, as you know, uh, although uh, we do uh, see uh, capitalist uh, uh, economic system, uh, but, but the Chinese uh, capitalism is not the same, uh, same thing with the Korean capitalism or Japanese capitalism 
in basically the Chinese capitalism is called state capitalism uh, in the sense that, that the state more by exercising strong leadership by uh, demonstrating strong political will to build the East Asian community. Uh, I don't think there will be uh, there will be uh, East Asian community in, in, in the future. So it, so it seems to me that uh, Japan and Korea share more common values and more common interests. Mm -hmm. So from, as a democracy, Korea and Japan uh, do advocate the, what they call rule-based rule uh, uh, culture. China joined the same thing. Uh, China wants to develop its own version of, uh, of uh, Asia as a community uh, involving only uh, Asian countries like ASEAN and uh, China, Japan and Korea. So, so this rivalry uh, will continue. Now, now what can uh, we do? Uh, uh, we can do another thing uh, to promote what I call soft, soft tourism by soft uh, nuclear non-proliferation, uh, even freedom of navigation, peaceful settlement of dispute. So these are, you know, public goods are different from private goods. Uh, I'm sure you have studied this. Uh, uh, public good is, is, is non-rival and non-exclusive. Um, you cannot deny other, other guy from enjoying oxygen, for example. Uh, oxygen is something uh, uh, that may be called as public good. So, so peace and stability, uh, well, even financial stability, free trade, uh, uh, Japan and Korea are different on the target of uh, reducing this carbon dioxide. Chinese always reject any numerical target. Uh, although China is the, is the world's largest promoter of, of the world, uh, they think that uh, uh, in order to maintain certain level of employment and, and uh, manufacturing, they cannot uh, reduce uh, uh, this carbon dioxide radically. Uh, they want to reduce this target uh, uh, slowly, gradually. Uh, China, I mean, Korea and, and, and Japan more or less are, are ready to, to accept certain targets. So, so what I'm suggesting is that Korea and Japan, human navigation, as you know, benefit all countries, not only Japan and Korea, but also China and the United States, and a peaceful uh, settlement of dispute, and uh, uh, enjoying global commons by regarding South China Sea as a common, and South, uh, nobody really owns the South China Sea, really. Uh, it, it could be enjoyed by, by all concerned by the kind of negotiation, basically. Uh, on this, is, 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 is the China Sea dispute too, as you know, there's a dispute between China and, and, and Japan uh, on gas development. Uh, they could uh, pay a negotiation and reach some agreement. So, so we could... <coughs> interchange or cultural exchange uh, or, or cooperation among new generation, new young, young leaders, we could uh, build a uh, uh, certain common perspective by sharing uh, certain common perception, even though we differ uh, on history and territorial dispute, but we could uh, uh, understand each other better. As you know, there's a school called constructivism in international relations theory. So the more you carry out dialogue, the more you meet with each other and try to, uh, uh, to uh, reach understanding, as you know. This is the ideal of ASEAN. For, according to ASEAN, they, they do advocate uh, uh, dialogue, informal gathering, consensus building, uh, as you know. So the more you do that, the more you understand each other. And then, and then you can build a better uh, community called, what they call, uh, promote common perspective. Uh, by solving, actually we could uh, uh, have agreement to uh, initiate uh, Asia campus. Uh, so three, three uh, universities have agreed to, to exchange students, uh, as you know, involving my institute, uh, KDI school and uh, Tsinghua University and, and Japanese uh, uh, graduate um, at the National Institute for Creative Studies uh, have agreed to exchange students and professors. I think this is a good idea. Uh, so, uh, presumably, this Rikyo, Yonsei, Kudan 
exchange program is a sort of uh, uh, things like that. And uh, the more we do uh, carry out this kind of uh, interchange, uh, the more better understanding you can reach. Uh, in international relations, you do what you can, really. Uh, however ambitious you may be, we cannot really overcome uh, the, the historical differences, territorial dispute, uh, political differences that have lasted for uh, centuries. Uh, but then, uh, you know, in, in the 21st century, uh, in the age of instant communication, and particularly in cyber area, uh, no country can completely control uh, cyber world. Uh, I really don't think that the Chinese authorities can uh, uh, can completely control Google. Uh, I was told that the mo some of, m most of you are interested in uh, uh, raising questions uh, and uh, uh, challenging uh, what I said. Uh, not, nothing I said is, is safe. In between Japan and Korea, mm -hmm. and you talked about politics, you talked about um, a lot of the disputes, and what can Korea do diplomatically as a middle power, as a, possibly as a bridging state between Korea and Japan, maybe Japan, uh, and China and Japan, China and the U.S., or um, what, can, what can Korea do? Well, Korea can, you know, can serve as a sort of a Bridge figures. You know, we cannot uh, uh, we cannot mediate uh, this dispute between the U.S. and China uh, because our power is not uh, sufficient to uh, uh, to make difference. But then we, we could uh, moderate the Sino-American confrontation, uh, you know, uh, serving as as a middleman, so to speak. Uh, for example, uh, you recall there's a body called APEC. Uh, now, in, in, in 1989, we mediated a conflict between the U.S. and China uh, by, you know, by inviting both Taiwan and the uh, uh, People's Republic of China. Okay? So Taiwan, Taiwan is participating in the APEC uh, process. Uh, so this, you know, th th that was a typical of Korea's role. Okay? Now, being, a, being middle power, but then Korea used to be likened to shrimp uh, in the battle of uh, uh, whales, but uh, we are no longer a shrimp. We are more, larger than uh, shrimp. Uh, uh, now we can make difference. I mean, Korea happened to be, what, uh, to be uh, right now what, the world uh, uh, 14th or 13th uh, uh, GDP in the world. And uh, uh, Korea's, uh, what, uh, in trade, Korea happened to be, I think, the ninth uh, largest uh, trading country, and uh, Korea right now is currently seventh or eighth uh, largest holder of uh, foreign reserve. Although right now China is the largest uh, foreign reserve country of the world, Japan is the second, Korea is seventh or eighth. So in economic term, we could uh, promote this uh, free, uh, free trade agreement. So we are ready for negotiating free trade agreement with China and with Japan. Okay. So by so doing, we want to involve China too in this uh, rule-based cooperation. So, so there, our, our strategy is to, to promote economic globalization. We, so we want, to, we want to keep China engaged in, in economic uh, uh, interconnection so that China also could play by the rules. It is true that after China joined the WTO in 2001, Finally, in trade, China has been you know, abiding these uh, international rules. Okay, so that's that's what what, what I can do. Mm -hmm. any, other, any other questions? Yes. Uh, professor, my name is Hong Bi from Yonsei University. Uh, I'm a little bit confused about the concept of cooperation, Northeast Asian cooperation. Uh, does cooperation have to? Include the concept of settling territorial borders. No, no. Cook. Uh, no I'm using cooperation as a general term. Uh, it, it it could uh, involve territorial dispute, but cooperation, you know, maybe enhanced in economic uh, dealing, in political dealing, in security dealing, in cultural dealing. Uh, as a general term, uh, cooperation means that the two countries seek a certain common interest. That's what I mean. So after 
after the after the 21st century, when the I think I think the you know, countries in ASEAN mm -hmm. will take a role take a role in settling territorial borders in Northeast Asia mm -hmm. by raising their economic power, uh, the economic power of countries other than Korea, China, and Japan. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm just thinking about well in the 22nd century maybe we can. Can uh, make a concept of cooperation, including settling territorial borders. I just thought about that, but I just want to be sure. I, 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 I hope you're right, but then uh, ASEAN, as you know, ASEAN consists of small countries. Uh, if you, if you ex exclude uh, Vietnam, the total GDP of ASEAN as a whole is, is less than Korea's GDP. Now they involve uh, Vietnam, so uh, in addition to that, uh, uh, Indonesia is rising rapidly. Uh, but then even if uh, Indonesia rise rapidly uh, along with the Taiwan, I mean the Thailand and, and Vietnam, uh, ASEAN as a whole cannot really compete with, uh, with China and uh, Japan as a collectivity. So, so that's a, what ASEAN can do is something like Korea. ASEAN, ASEAN, you know, ASEAN serve as a sort of a uh, British paper. You know, they, they invite uh, China, Japan, and uh, Korea in, in, in uh, ASEAN regional forum. So ASEAN is providing a venue, a, a meeting place. But uh, when, whenever they have their own dispute, uh, you know, ASEAN can do little. ASEAN didn't take any action at all about this dispute between China and the Philippines. Let alone ASEAN to take any action at all about about Myanmar, about Burma, you see. So so now it's all good for ASEAN to promote the consensus, uh, informal meeting. Now ASEAN started back in, in 1967. Now during these all these long years, what did ASEAN achieve? As you know, when 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 Thailand and, and uh, Cambodia even fought with the uh, with the Confirmed uh, two years ago, ASEAN did nothing. You see, so so uh, uh, again they do what they can. Uh, it doesn't mean that I don't I don't want to to belittle uh, ASEAN role. And, you know, uh, ASEAN ASEAN is serving as a useful place by inviting United States uh, and China and European countries to ASEAN. By so by so doing, they are you know they are enhancing their own leverage. Yes. Yes. And I want to ask about, uh, you said uh, there is a European identity in EU, mm -hmm. I think it's because of they have the similar religion, mm -hmm. uh, but you said that there is no uh, Asian identity in uh, Asia, so can we have such kind of identity in the future, and if there is, uh, what do you think is the factor of Asia? Well, uh, your question is, can there be a nation identity in the future? Uh, it, it could be, but then it will take a long time. Uh, it, it, it will take uh, more than centuries in my view, as you know. For one thing, in your country, and I, I'm very blunt, in your country, uh, one, one thing your country uh, do well is to maintain uh, your sense of identity. Uh, unlike other countries, the number of immigrants uh, in Japan is less than 1%. You don't want to uh, invite uh, uh, Filipino, uh, ama Filipino uh, nurses and workers in, into your society because that may, may well cause instability. And also, uh, the number of Christians in, in, in Japan is less than 3%. So, so you have a strong sense of a, of a Japanese identity, as you know. You want to maintain this uh, Japanese. Now, now, even among this in, interpersonal change, many Japanese people you know, avoid uh, mingling with foreigners. So when, when they invite the foreigners to their dinner, uh, I mean, they feel uncomfortable, what they call yokomishi. Uh, so so uh, you have to overcome this, uh, this uh, 
not anti-foreign sentiment, but this uh, uh, anti-foreign uh, culture, so to speak, as uh, you know, uh, by uh, accepting more immigrant, uh, uh, by opening up your society religiously, culturally, uh, to the extent that you can really uh, uh, promote this uh, multicultural identity. And uh, it could be, but I don't, I don't think it will be done uh, very fast, given the nature of Japanese society. Uh, I think in, in this regard, Japan is unique. Uh, uh, I mean, Korean, Koreans are much more open than uh, Japanese, as far as this, uh, this internal change is concerned. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, my name is Hee Jin Kim from Yonsei University. And I have a question about China and America, the U.S. relation. I heard that the China and the U.S. has very linked because, uh, for example, China has keep buying, uh, China keep buying a U.S. Treasury bill and the U.S. has offered the because of the treasure deal. So I think even though China keep their surrounded territory and the US wants to intervene in Asia, I think they need each other and cooperate with each other. But why they didn't, uh, don't cooperate and they do not negotiate? So your question is that <coughs> Chinese are buying much of American treasury bond yeah. uh, so, uh, as a result of that uh, uh, the Chinese economy is interdependent with the American economy. That is true. As you know, right now, Chinese are holding the largest uh, amount of uh, US, U.S. Treasury bond, reaching $1.6 uh, trillion. But then, then, as you know, the Americans also uh, think that the Chinese are manipulating this yuan, the Ch Chinese renminbi, in order to keep the, the low price of, of uh, yuan so that China can export their goods to, to the U.S. more. So, so people like Romney is calling that China is stealing American uh, manufacturing technologies and manipulating Chinese uh, uh, currency. So even in the economic uh, uh, relationship, uh, everything is not smooth, as you know. Only when there are certain common interests uh, only then can they moderate their interest. And, and to do so, they are carrying out this, this annual uh, strategic and economic dialogue. Okay? Much more importantly, however, the United States is not going to allow China from exercising hegemony in East Asia. China, you know, China is not willing to accept American interference. As you know. Here, as you know, Yang, Yang Jiezhu, I think it, that, that 2010 at the ASEAN Regional Forum, uh, Hillary, uh, American Secretary of State, uh, made a statement saying that uh, uh, freedom of uh, navigation and peaceful peaceful settlement are American national interest. Okay, and then some of uh, some of these foreign ministers of uh, ASEAN countries sided with the Hillary statement, and then Yang Jiezhu, as you know, spoke up, saying that. Uh, Look, you are small countries, and China is a large countries. So as large countries, we may have a different view. So this is a fact, he said. Uh, and, 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 and also he said that a third country, meaning United, a third, a third country should not interfere in these Asian affairs. So here, uh, it seems to me that uh, Yang Jiezhou was advocating sort of a Chinese version of Monroe Doctrine. So, uh, Yang Jiezhou think that the uh, U.S. has no genius of, uh, of uh, interfering in Asian affairs. So this rivalry, strategic rivalry, is uh, inevitable to continue. That's my opinion. Even though they uh, depend on each other? Yes. Yes. That happened uh, between, the U between uh, Great Britain and Germany before World War I. The economic, uh, you know, economic interdependence was deep, but then that did not prevent uh, uh, this country uh, from going to war. Any other questions? Yes. Thanks for your lecture. My name is Shinya Siddhi. As you said that we can overcome the cultural difference by promoting international communication. Um, so my question is, 
how can we deal with the difference uh, in polit uh, political system? Hmm? How can we deal with the difference in political system? A political system? Yeah. Uh, uh, that's a very difficult question. In other words, uh, uh, basically, you cannot uh, uh, settle dispute, uh, political differences through negotiation. But then what you can do is to better understand each other. For example, uh, the American understand why the Chinese are, you know, Chinese are reluctant to accept uh, uh, human rights as a universal values. Because the, the Chinese is thinking that uh, uh, feeding people is more important than human rights. And American understand that. So, by, you know, by understanding each political situation better, you could minimize, you could reduce conflict, if not resolve. Uh, while maintaining your different views on human rights and democracy, but you can respect each other. You see, I mean, uh, there was a French uh, uh, thinker named Voltaire who said that uh, uh, you and I have different views, but then, then I'm going to fight uh, for the fact that you you have a different view. You have a right to keep your views. You see, so by by respecting each other you could uh, minimize, moderate this country. Now, in the end, however, when China, my view, China will democratize sometime, not now. It will take, take a long time. So, by changing your domestic life gradually, perhaps China can uh, accommodate more of American view of human rights and rule of law. That's my prejudice, but uh, uh, it's up to you. Yes, you have questions. I'm from Rika University and I'm Rika Ito. And my question is, how, uh, I just want to know your opinion on how to solve the uh, territorial issue is better for all of us. And because we had a negotiation with other countries so far, a lot, but I guess each country wants the benefits from the territory, like they are rich in risk, probably rich in uh, natural resources, and probably each country wants that. So, and what can we well, negotiate? What can, what can, what you, can do? you do? Now, uh, uh, I mean, to put it bluntly, so resolving a uh, trade policy issue involves war, fighting. Only by war you can resolve uh, this territory issue. Okay. Now, short of going to war, now what do you do? You could uh, negotiate, you could uh, carry out dialogue, as you know, try to avoid uh, going to war confrontation, and, and, and put more emphasis on other important things, like economic interdependence, cultural exchange, technological exchange, as you know, on promoting global uh, public goods, or promoting the concept of global commons. By so doing, you could uh, uh, avoid confrontation. Now, now later on, however, as you know, Ch when China become much more democratized, pluralized, and then perhaps uh, Chinese leadership will survive without uh, you know, resorting to this ex exclusive nationalism or territorial discipline. Only then can there be some resolution. You see, I don't think uh, chi China is interested in this uh, Tiawidao or Sengaku per se. If they yield on this issue, as you know, they have to yield on other issues, like the Tibet, for example, like Indian border, for example, like other, uh, other territorial issues. This is why China cannot back down. And the same is true uh, on, on the Japanese side. If, if Japan back down on this uh, Sengaku island, then Japan has to back down on the northern territory, on Tokyo issues, on other issues. So this is why it's, it's quite difficult to resolve, so resolve. There is no resolution in my mind. All you can do is to, uh, is, is to keep this dispute to calm, uh, more or less uh, stable. In the meantime, as you know, you try to deepen your cooperation in, in other things, other than territorial issues. Okay. Any
Thank you, Professor. I'm Zhao Zheng from Fujian University, and my major is Environmental Science and Technology. And uh, there is a heated topic, my major concern, that is uh, climate change and global warming. So I just want to ask uh, how these three countries can cooperate in this, in this topic. Yeah, I think that, that's a very good question. It seems to me that, uh, again, uh, since China, you know, China has become the uh, largest polluter of the world, uh, <laughs> it's, it's imperative that China should do something about uh, uh, reducing this carbon dioxide. Uh, one way of doing that is to promote what you call green, green revolution, green cooperation, by promoting green facilities that reduce you know, release of carbon dioxide and, and other pollutants, as you know. In this regard, Japanese is, is at the forefront of technology. And Japan is willing to provide more money too. And Korea, from our side, the Limyanga Almond is, is extremely interesting in promoting this uh, Green Revolution as one of the priority items for international cooperation. So we hope that uh, China can join this effort, joint effort, not necessarily for Chinese sake, but for, for the com common goods of East Asia or North Asia. Yes, lady. Okay, uh, so I'm Lady Chang from Fukuoka University, and uh, thanks for your excellent speech. Uh, in your speech, you just mentioned uh, because of some different cultural issues or different uh, political uh, systems, uh, China and uh, Japan won't easily accept each other's leadership. So, do you think uh, there must be a leader in the East Asia community, or is there any other mode of uh, mode of alliance in East Asian community. Thank you. Uh, East Asian community, right now, currently, as you know, China is trying to assert at the, uh, at the uh, what, uh, uh, ASEAN Plus 3. There, China, as you know, is exercising leadership to a certain extent. Because China, China concluded its uh, FDA with ASEAN and uh, China is providing a great deal of uh, aid, economy, to ASEAN countries, okay? But then Japan, on the other hand, is providing more money, more aid to ASEAN countries, and, and Japan has joined this uh, TPP and uh, agreed to negotiate this TPP with the United States. So Japan is, is beginning to assert its own leadership, okay? So this rivalry between Japan and, and China is not going to disappear anytime soon. Okay? Now, ideally, as I imply, uh, Japan and Korea uh, exercise joint leadership, as you know. And only then can there be so called East Asian community, as, as happened between Germany and France in New, as you know. But that, having said that, is not going to be realized anytime soon. Uh, you know that uh, this. Uh, uh, anti-Japanese sentiment in China is rising, particularly among the younger generation. And uh, according to, to uh, press release in, in, in Japan, uh, as high as 85% of the Japanese public, as you know, is, is really against the Chinese leadership. Uh, Anti-Chinese anti sentiment is rising in the Japanese public. So, so like or not, this is reality. Now, how can you reconcile these differences? Of course, you can promote exchange and uh, cooperation, but that will take a long time. Yes? from Fudan University, and I'm majoring in uh, environmental science and engineering. Uh, uh, maybe uh, I'm very thank you for the lecture, but I want to share my uh, point of view about the environmental issue. Uh, considering the Chinese, uh, chi China, uh, maybe China is the uh, most uh, 
biggest uh, manufacturing factor of the world, so they do a lot of work and uh, uh, maybe some pollution is uh, uh, um, can, uh, cannot avoidable and uh, we may, maybe we should consider the history of the pollution uh, too because uh, in the uh, in the history, many developed uh, developed countries also uh, polluted. But uh, and nowadays, we maybe we focus on the environmental issues uh, more, so they find the uh, problem and uh, they uh, ask uh, China to be responsible for the issue. But uh, 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 in China, there are. Um, um, biggest population you now and not everyone uh, is very rich so uh, China has to do a lot to uh, not only focus on the environmental issue but also the economy development and uh, uh, we also uh, want to be responsible for the issue so we our uh, wind uh, has also a promise to uh, reduce the uh, carbon di uh, reduce the carbon dioxide emission by 40 percent per GDP so we are uh, gradually to uh, share our res responsibility and uh, uh, I hope uh, every country could uh, understand Chinese uh, China thank you yes I am. <coughs> I am aware of the fact that uh, you do what you can you are doing your best as you know but it is true that uh, uh, at the, I mean, to, to be very honest with you, at the Copenhagen meeting in November to, uh, 2009, uh, Wen Jiawa himself led the anti-Western coalition and rejected uh, the target for reducing carbon dioxide. Okay, even at, at the uh, second uh, what can what the second meeting uh, there too, Chinese uh, refused to accept any overall uh, reduction target, as you know. And then, then in your way, you want to keep this target for individual industries, individual factories. So you are trying to reduce this uh, 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 release of carbon dioxide in Chinese way, in, in your way. Okay, so I think that is uh, quite good, that is acceptable. But then, uh, if I may uh, express my view, I think this uh, environmental issue is, is going to be one of the difficult, uh, most uh, political difficult issues. Recently in Qigong, I mean, the, uh, an industrial project was, uh, was uh, rejected by the People's uh, Rebellion and the Chinese authorities accepted their demand. And more and more incidents like that will, will occur. Now it is true that at this time of the year, in Beijing, as you know, uh, the smell of this uh, yellow coal is so, so, so tough, so, so bad, that it, it becomes difficult to breathe the air, you see. So, so I think you should do something about this uh, reduction. Uh, time is running away, so we hope you can do better. Uh, at the same time, I do appreciate uh, uh, your effort in, in uh, trying to reduce this carbon dioxide uh, release. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, this will be the last question. The last one? Yeah, this. Okay. Thank you for your speech. I am Mikia Sakata from KU University. And my question is that I understand that East Asian community is very hard to make it possible and it's going to take a long time. But when it, is, when it comes true, what will happen? I want to know about that because when, when it makes, like, the East Asian community is built, what will happen to each country? Like, what good will happen to each country? Because when I see EU, it's not a magical something that makes, like, a happy, very happy ending for everything, everyone. So what will happen? I mean, uh, first, you know, this the, the ideal community start with, uh, uh, in the case of EU, start with uh, what they call tariff union. You reduce uh, your tariff, uh, you know. And second, uh, you you move on to the next state called the free trade agreement, meaning basically you open up 
uh, your trade to each other. Okay? And, and, and third step involves a common market. There you open up your labor market and, and all, you know, all your goods and services. Okay? And, and the final stage is the political union called EU. So there are, there are different steps. Now in East Asia, we, we haven't started even a uh, first level called the tariff uh, uh, union. As you know, this is first step. Now, what will happen if you eliminate tariff? Then you can export and import anything you want without tariff, and that can promote the uh, uh, trade volume enormously, uh, as you know. So, for example, if we have this FTA with the United States, I mean, our cars can uh, benefit in the American market creatively, and on the other hand, uh, American wines, as you know are getting cheap without tariff. And something like that happened between China and Korea too. Do you think that East, like, if the East Asian community becomes possible, will become like the superpower, or like, is it still going to be like the US? Or? I don't think so. In, in, I mean, that's, that's a very complicated issue. In, in, in East Asia, I think the first step would be something like OECD. None of the, uh, you have a, a common organization whereby you share common data, common report. But uh, it, you, it will be difficult for these countries to coordinate their macroeconomic policies. You know why? No leader is willing to sacrifice his domestic welfare for the sake of uh, East Asian community. You see, this is true uh, in China, in Korea, in Vietnam particularly when this uh, recession and deflation take place in Japan and in Korea. Uh, thank you for your attention. And this is the... Uh, and I have another announcement. We will have a photo taking after this session, so we have to go to the uh, underwood statue, so please be prepared for that. And after the lunch, there is a discussion, and in the workbook, there is a discussion group, so you can check it and don't be confused about the group. And there is a classroom. The classroom is the three, uh, this building, S311. There is a N3, and there is a S3, so you, you should check it, and the building is here, and the room number is S311. And let's go for the photo taking. The schedule is we will go for the photo taking and then go to lunch and then have a little break and then come back here to have a discussion. So you have to uh, take all your belongings with you. Uh, and another announcement, you should be together with your living group, so gather together with your living group, please.
Thank you. 